Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Today we are learning how to make invitations on our crickets. So about a month ago, my guy Greg asked me to marry him and I said yes. Look, a ring. And ever since then, I've been thinking about weddings. And I wondered, is it possible to use my Cricut to make beautiful wedding invitations? I did some research and sure enough, I found that these gorgeous filigree laser cut style invitations were perfect for cutting on a Cricut. I mean, look at these amazing intricate cuts that you can do. Now you can buy templates for the style of invitation on Etsy for anywhere from two to $25. But I love to design things myself, so I created an entire invitation set with swirly hearts. And I'm sharing it with you free so that I can show you how to make this style of invitation on your Cricut too. Feel free to use my design or check below this video for links to some of the best laser cut style invitations on Etsy. In my invitation set, we have this a flat invitation, a gatefold style invitation, a trifold style invitation with a pocket, a fourfold style invitation, a thank you card, an RSVP card, and even a matching favor box. Now to make these pretty filigree invitations on your Cricut, you're going to need a good quality paper. I recommend Shimmer cardstock. Uh, you can get it anywhere from 65 pounds to 110 pounds. This is a 100 pack of shimmer cardstock that I got at Michael's. And you can see here how shimmery it is. It's very pretty. Uh, you can also get it in a variety of different colors. And I have links to those below this video as well. So here's some of the colors you can get, right? Now, if you decide that you, you may, you need to decide if you want to print your invitations on your printer or use one of the Cricut pens to actually write it out. And I'm going to experiment with two different styles of pen to help you decide if it's right for you. And let's not forget the Cricut itself. You can do this with either a Cricut Explore or a Cricut Maker. And you're also gonna want a fine point blade and a scoring stylus or a scoring tool, as well as a new light grip mat. And you're also gonna need some things to keep your invitations together. For that, I recommend um, glue dots, tacky glue, tape, and complementary colors of ribbon, anywhere from a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch. And I'll show you when to use which ones for the best results. So are you ready to make these? Let's head on over to my blog and I will show you where you can find the free filigree cut invitation set. All right, so head on over to jennifermaker.com. My tutorial for these projects is on the blog, but what we're looking for are the files. So click on libraries up there at the top, and then you'll want to either request a password if you don't have one, or go ahead and head on into the resource library, and you'll find uh, there's two different files. There's one for the invitation set itself, and there's a separate file for the favor box. So you'll want to just search on the word filigree to find both of them and click each one to download it to your computer. And then you also make sure that you unzip it. Uh, usually you can just tell your browser to open it, but you might need to select it and actually tell it to extract. So we're looking for the SVG file for both of these two projects, and we're gonna upload both to Cricut Design Space. So let's head on over there, and I will show you how to prepare that file. All right, so here we are in Cricut Design Space. Click on New Project and then click on Upload over on the left and click on Upload Image and click Browse. And you're gonna go search for the SVG file that you just downloaded. Make sure it says SVG in it and click Open. And you'll see it appear over there in the preview and click Save. And we wanna go get the other, the, fill, the favor box as well so that we have that. So you wanna click Upload Image again and Browse and find the favor box that you downloaded and extracted. You want the SVG file and click Open. And you'll do the same process. You go ahead and save that. And once they're uploaded, you select both files and then select the, the green insert images button in the lower right corner. And then they'll both appear on your canvas and design space. Uh, they're on top of each other, so we'll move them so we can see them. Now this is my design, and if you like this idea, but don't quite want my design, there are things that you can do. In fact, you can actually design your own card like this. It's 
amazingly easy to do using either Inkscape or Illustrator, which is what I use to design this. And I actually teach people how to do this in my course called Cut Above. And so if you're interested in making your own filigree style invitation or card or anything like that, I encourage you to check it out. And this is the what it looks like as you design. However, today we're just going to work on this invitation. So once you're in design space, this paper box up here is fine. You may want to resize it. You can go as wide as 11.4 inches so that it fits on your mat. You're not going to be able to go a lot bigger than that unless you go to a different size mat and paper. But the invitations down here do need some preparation. All these lines you see here in this red box, those need to all be converted to score lines. So we're going to start by ungrouping these invitations so that we can see each individual element. Now we need to click on these black lines that we see here. So here's one right here. It might be hard to select. If it is, just go over and look for the things that look like they're just lines like this. And then you'll, you go up to the line type menu and you choose score. And this turns it into a score line. And of course, if you don't plan to score, you can just delete these entirely, but we want to score. So then we select both the base layer and the score line together and click attach so that it scores on the card, not just, you know, it needs to actually, we need to tell it what to score to. Now these here have no score lines. We have to do nothing. This, however, these have score lines. So again, we want to identify just that, just the line. So you, then and here it is. We change it from line, um, from cut to score in the line type menu. And then we select the base layer that we want to actually score. So you'll see two items selected and then you click attach. Now you're scoring that base layer. Do the same thing for this one. We'll click on just that cut that line there, change that to score, and then select the base layer below it. You hold down the shift key and you can select both at the same time and then click attach. And we can send that to the back so that we can still see our white invitation on top. And over here, um, this one here, which is the pocket of this card, same thing, we select just that cut line, change it to score, hold down the shift key, select the base layer. So now we have two layers selected and click attach. And with this final one, the four, four, four fold card, we want to select that red layer. That is the score layer, even though it looks like it's red, we change it to score and we select the base layer while holding down the shift key. So we have two layers selected and it looks like I had a problem selecting that. So I'm going to start over and yeah, we'll click there in the canvas and get just the, the score line and the base layer and then click attach. And we can again send that to the back so we can see our white card. These white layers are the actual where you would do printing or lettering for your invitation. Now, if we go ahead and click make it now, we'll see it. everything is set. Here's our white parts. And then here are each of the cards themselves with the scores and the cuts all together. But chances are you don't want to cut all of these projects. Chances are you want to pick one invitation, let's say this one, and you don't need the rest. If this is the case, let me show you how to get rid of the rest so you don't have to print everything. You just click and drag the parts that you don't want on your canvas to select them just like this. And when you let go, it'll select just these parts here. And then you can press delete in the upper right or just press delete on your keyboard and get rid of them. Right. So maybe this is all you want to do. Just a favor box and just this trifold or sorry, gatefold invitation, which is totally cool. Right. You may want to put some lettering on your invitation. Right. You might want to use a Cricut. So if you do, you just move this off to the side and we're going to click on text and we're just going to start typing some text. You get to choose what you put here. Just keep in mind that too much text is going to get difficult to read with the pen. So this it's better to have, you want it to be large enough so that you don't have too much and you'll want to experiment with this. It may not be right for you. I think it's best for a casual writing, nothing too fancy because it's just not quite clear enough with the pen. And to find the writing fonts, you want to click on filter and choose writing. And these are all the fonts that will look good with a pen. 
not the other ones, which will do weird things, but these writing fonts. And you want to look through, look for ones that aren't going to cost you any extra money unless you don't mind paying. You can tell by because there's a price on the side there. So I have chosen this font here. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the text that I'd like to use. And all I did to modify this was just double click it. We could change the alignment and everything. Now you'll notice that the letters aren't connected and this is cursive. So we need to fix that. We just do that by bringing the letter space in so that the letters are touching the way that they would be if we were using a pen and writing this by hand, right? We want the ideas to make this look handwritten. But if we look closer, we can see that it doesn't quite line up the way we want. Some letters are squished. Some letters are just not connected. But there's ways that we can fix this. If you go up to advanced and do ungrouped letters, you now have total control over every single letter. And you can just move things around until you're happy. This will take a while. Uh, so you'll want to be patient and just you know, select individual parts or letters and move them until you feel like it looks the way that you want. And again, you're going to want to do some testing. You'll probably need to fiddle with this a bit to get it the way that you want. But it can have a really nice effect, especially if you're doing any kind of like envelope addressing, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So once you have your letter set the way that you think it's going to look best, you need to attach all of these together before you continue. So select everything and click attach down there at the bottom. Now you can change the color of the text here if you'd like. So you can change it to calligraphy and put golden. It's not important to do that, but if you'd like to see how it's going to look, you can. Now we also need to attach it to the white layer because it needs to right on that layer. So size it to where you want it to be and then select both the white layer, your invitation itself, and your lettering and click attach. So the lettering is on that white sheet. And then you can move the the fancy filigree card back into position if you want. It's actually not important that these two be together. In this case, you'll be putting them together later. So go ahead and click make it. And let's make sure everything looks okay. So this first layer has a draw and then cut, just what we want. The second layer is score and cut. And this third layer, the favorite box is just cut because its scores are built in. So this looks great. Let's go ahead and click continue. And you'll wanna to connect to your machine. And then we're gonna choose the right material because the material makes a huge difference in cutting these properly, especially if you're using shimmer paper, which has a coating and can be a little bit harder to cut through. You want to be sure that you're using a setting that has uh, will be able to cut through it properly. So medium cardstock here might be fine if you're using 65 pound shimmer paper. You'd have to test it. However, some of my shimmer paper is actually 80 and 110 pound, and so I've created a heavy cardstock custom material. If you're not familiar with this, click on material settings down there at the bottom, and you can actually see exactly my custom material setting. I called it heavy, so let's go find that. It's right here. I'm going to click on edit so you can see what settings I am using here. I've got 305 pressure. I'm cutting it twice and I'm still using the fine point blade. If you want to put in your own custom material, click down here, give this a name, like for example, 110 pound card stock, so that you can identify it later. Click save and then you can choose all of your settings. So I would say around 300 pressure and I would definitely cut it twice. If you're using a lighter cardstock, you don't have to do this. But this is how you basically you just change these settings until it's cutting perfectly each time. And then you don't have issues with cutting, really. This is one of the best ways to make sure you're going to cut these invitations properly is to have that pressure. And so now that we've set that custom material, we go back in and we select it. So we go scroll down to my materials and choose 110 pound cardstock and click OK. Now I always I always give my materials a little bit more pressure. It always helps so much. Now before we send this to our Cricut, we need to talk about paper. Here is a pack of 65 pound 
white shimmer paper that I got at Michael's. You can see here it's got this lovely sheen on one side. This works awesome if you'd like to use white, but there are colors as well. And I have links to the various colors. You really need to get those on Amazon. But here's some of the pretty pastel colors that you can get in shimmer paper. Of course, you don't have to use shimmer paper. You can use plain 65 pound, 80 pound, or 110 pound cardstock. It's really your choice. Here's my Cricut Maker. You don't need to use a maker for this project. You can use a Cricut Explorer. Either one works just fine. Just make sure it's powered on. Get out a new blue light grip mat and put your shimmer paper or whatever paper you're using onto it. Make sure it's well adhered. And then make sure the corners of your mat are under those two guides and press against the rollers as you press the load and unload button. That's the double arrow button. This Cricut light will flash and this tells us it's ready to cut. But remember we're doing some scoring. So we need to insert either our scoring stylus which we use on the Explore machines, or our scoring tool, which we use on the Maker machines. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my scoring tool in, and we just open up this clamp right here, and we pull out our fine point blade. We'll use that later, so just set that aside for now. And we put in our scoring tool. The gears fit right in there. Close the clamp, make sure it's well seated, close it and then we go ahead and press the flashing Cricut button to get started. Now when you use a scoring tool and really any kind of tool on the maker it always checks to make sure you have the right tool in. So if you're over here at your machine and it's not cutting be sure to double check design space to see if it's alerting you that you don't have the right tool in. Uh, it's not uncommon to accidentally put the rotary tool in instead of the scoring tool. We've all done that before. But once it's in, it'll start scoring just like this. And I really, really recommend that you score like this on your Cricut if you're able to. If you're not, you can always score manually later using a scoring board. I won't be showing that in this video. But I really like this because, I mean, the Cricut can score. It's one of the awesome features about it. And it makes it a lot easier, especially if you're going to be doing a bunch of these invitations. So when it's done, that Cricut light flashes again and that is our signal to remove that scoring tool and put in our fine point blade so we can actually start cutting this. Of course if you're using a scoring stylus it goes into the accessory clamp over on the left and you don't have to switch things out. That's certainly one benefit to using the stylus instead of the scoring tool. The tool is, does a deeper score though and I like it better. All right so once that's in we've clicked the flashing Cricut button again and it's just going to go to work and it's going to cut out. Uh, I believe that this mat has several different invitations on it. It's got three, I think, and it will take a while. So something important to keep in mind is that when you choose to cut your own and make your own invitations, you're essentially exchanging time for the work rather than money. So if you don't have a lot of time, you're gonna to wanna to pay to have your invitations made. Whereas if you have more time than money, you doing something like this is totally an awesome thing to do. And of course, there's that satisfaction in knowing that we created something really special with our own hands and it's customized to us. So here we can, I've sped up the video so you can see the Cricut cutting out the invitation. It does not go this fast. <laughs> I didn't time how long it takes to do each invitation. And I think that it's going to depend a little bit on which Cricut you have as well. So you're just going to want to do it yourself so that you can budget your time and make sure you leave enough time to create all your invitations before your deadline to send them out. This is really important. So always do tests. Time how long it takes to do things. Make sure you have all your settings. Uh, you know, when if it's not cutting all the way through or it's tearing, as it cuts, there's a lot of things that could be going on. One, it may be that your mat is not sticky enough. Uh, two, it could be that your blade is not clean enough. And I will show you how to clean your blade. I, I in fact, would recommend cleaning your blade right before you know every few invitations that you create. It's gonna, it's going to pick up debris, and um, you want you want your cuts to be as sharp as possible. It just makes it so much easier. 
And of course, you need to make sure you have the right settings as we discussed. These are all very important things. It might take a few tries to get just the right settings, but don't give up. As you can see, it's absolutely possible to do this. I have cut these on both my Explorer and my Maker. It just might take a few tries to get the settings, the pressure, the mat, everything working together in harmony. But once you do, you can just Keep feeding that Cricut your paper and get these invitations created. Okay, the Cricut is signaling that it's done, so I'm gonna go ahead and click that unload button and pull it out, and you can see here that it's it, we've finished cutting. You can see there's a couple areas that are a little bit rough. I could certainly have stood to clean my blade before I cut this, and, I'll, and I will show you how to do that in a minute. Now, if you would like to use a Cricut pen to write your invitations rather than print them on a printer, let me show you how to do that. I put my paper in the upper left corner of my mat, putting the mat under the guidelines and pressing that against as I load it in. Now we're gonna take our gold calligraphy pen, which is the two point, uh, the two point size, which is the smallest calligraphy pen that I am aware of that Cricut makes. And you're going to want to make sure that this the tip, it's got a chiseled tip. It needs to be going at a 45 degree angle off to the left for the best results. And so go ahead and put that in your accessory clamp and close it and press the go button. And we will watch the Cricut hand letter, hand letter, machine letter. I'm not sure what we call this. Pen letter, our invitations. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you want to make sure that you're using the right combination of font and pen size to get the right effect. Let me come in here a bit and show you what this looks like. So you can see that looks pretty cool, I think. But if you get much smaller than this, the letters will start to just sort of fill in because this is a, this is a pretty big pen. So in that case, if you need to have smaller text, I recommend that you use a gold glitter pen or really, you know, any color, but a glitter gel pen has a really pretty effect and it can have a much finer text. You can have much smaller text. Again, you're gonna to wanna to experiment with this until you get the right effect. By the way, here's a tip. Put the cap of your pen back on your pen as it's in the machine so that you don't lose it and you remember to cap it. Also, one more thing, if you get a package of pens at the store and you put it in and you start trying to use your marker and you discover that it's not writing, it's okay, relax. So take your pen, make sure it's pointing face down, put it into your, you know, the cups over there on the side, just put it somewhere so that the tip of the pen is pointing towards the ground and leave it there for, you know, a few hours to get the ink flowing properly into the tip. And always store your pens that way. Always store your pens so that the tip is down. And that will help you then when you go to put it into your machine, and then it's going to properly write and then all the ink hasn't flown to the bottom. So this is what I do. And in fact, I had a pack of pens that I got for this project and it was doing just that. And I just you know set them down so the ink could flow down into the tip and they were just fine. Now we can see here that it's cutting and it's just cutting out the, you know, the outline of the white card so that it's going to be perfectly sized for our invitations. We don't have to do anything extra. I just love this about Cricut. I mean, it writes exactly where we tell it to and it cuts it out and it's awesome. Now you'll notice it's cutting it twice because that's what my settings call for. Again, you want to experiment to see if you really need to cut it twice because that's going to add time to, you, to your invitation making schedule. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's press that unload button, take a look and see how it turned out. There we go. That looks pretty. I really love this shimmer paper. All right, let's take this and our cut invitations over to the light box and assemble everything. So here's the invitation that we cut on our Cricut. You can see there's a couple of rough spots. It's actually pretty good. But we can even get rid of those rough spots by making sure we have a sticky mat and also always cleaning our blade whenever we're having an issue. I just use a balled up piece of aluminum foil and I just press that plunger in and I poke the blade into that aluminum ball, I don't know, 40, 50 times, and it cleans it great. It makes an awesome, nice, sharp, clean cut. 
Now to remove your invitation from your Cricut mat, I recommend you turn your mat face down on your surface and curl the mat away from your surface and that lets your invitations come right off without curling themselves. So curl the mat, not your paper. You get left with all of this extra stuff on your mat. Uh, just make sure everything is out there. Lots of little bits. You're gonna want a place to keep these so that your area doesn't get too messy. There's the pocket for the trifold. Now, I use your scraper to get everything off quickly and easily, just like this. And uh, this the scraper works great. I even have a bigger one that's even faster. All right, let's take a look at what we have here. So here's all of our pieces, um, our thank you cards, our flat lay cards, that's our fourfold invitation. There is our trifold with our pocket. And this is our favor box. All right. And then these are each of the invitations that I put the gold lettering on so that you can see what they look like in each case. So these here are the two point calligraphy pen. And you can see it's a, some cases it's a little, little dark. I use this pack of pens here. Now I also use the gold litter pen from the Martha Stewart ones and you can see here that it's definitely lighter but it's finer as well and that might work better for you. I recommend you test to see which one works for your lettering and the style and everything that you've done. Now let's put this together. I recommend glue dots for these invitations. So look for the score line. You're going to want to score where on the side that you see the score line. Very gently fold that in and then you're going to want to use something to really reinforce that line. You could use your scoring tool itself. You can use something like a pair of tweezers, anything with a nice good edge to really sit, seat that fold down well because shimmer paper is quite sturdy. It's going to resist folding. So once you've got that in there, you're going to want to put your glue dots on the back. It's so fast to do this. You know, and then you don't want to use glue because glue is going to want to curl your invitations and it's not going to, it, this doesn't work and it's also messy. Use glue dots. Trust me, they work awesome. Now we need to keep their invitation closed because you'll see here it doesn't really want to. You could wrap a ribbon around the whole thing or you could just sort of tie a ribbon around two points and make a bow. I recommend when, when you make a bow, you turn your project upside down and put the bow on that way and then the little tails will want to hang down instead of hang it uh, up or at funny angles. That always works the best for me. And then trim that off. And you can do this any way you want. You know, you don't have to put that bow there. I think it just looks so pretty with the bow. All right, so there's our pretty gatefold card. Now let's do our trifold card with a pocket. The first step is to fold the tabs of the pocket inward. These tabs are going to go inside the card on the right side. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it fits in there so that your card can close properly. It's just something to be aware of. Use a tool to get the edges of those, the tabs on your pocket down nice and flat as you can. And we're going to put um, glue dots again on those tabs. I think it works a lot better, again, than tacky glue, which can get wet and can distort your card. This is also much faster. Just make sure that you line it up to the bottom right corner of your imitation so that it folds without there being any kind of hindrance. And then make sure that your invitation fits in there. You might have to wiggle a little bit, uh, but it should fit in there properly. And now we need to add the decorative side. So again, we just fold that tab and we're going to put it right at the edge here so it wraps around like this. So just put some glue dots there at the edge. Make sure it's really well seated at that edge and check to make sure that it's not. I didn't, I made a mistake the first time, so you're gonna wanna gently remove that. I'm sure that if you're doing a bunch of these, you're gonna get really good at this. You want it to really be lined up there so that it folds and then fold everything down. And again, it's not gonna wanna stay folded, so you're gonna wanna wrap a ribbon around it just as you did with the other card. You could also use a belly band. I did not design one for this, but a belly band is really just like a strip of 
a similar material or a complementary material that you wrap around in tape or glue to keep it closed. It's the same idea. All right, so that is our trifold invitation. This is our fourfold card. It's got scores along all four edges. So do the same very gently, fold those down and go around. You want to be careful, you know, this is a pretty fragile, right? It's, it's meant to be very delicate and elegant. So just be careful as you do this. And then again, use a tool of some sort to make sure that those scored edges are as flat as possible. And then we put our glue dots on the back of our invitation and we place it in the center inside of our card. There's a margin there. It doesn't go all the way to the edges. Again, I won't want to stay closed, so I recommend that you use ribbon to keep it closed. You can put the ribbon in a lot of different ways. You can wrap it up like a present, or you can put it through some of the filigree edges. Whatever works best for you, experiment, find the look that you like, and one that isn't too fussy. <laughs> Unless you're only doing 10 invitations, in which case you'd go to town. <laughs> Be as fussy as you want, but if you're doing like 50 or 100, you need to keep in mind that this every little action you take will add up over time. So, so there we go. So there's a little ribbon. Here is our flat lay card. So easy, no scurrying, just put some glue dots on the back of the card and place it on. Same thing for your RSVP thank you cards, all those little flat ones. And that's it. All right, now let me show you the favor box. So you just go through and you fold everything in just as I'm doing here. All of the tabs, the top tab, the side tabs, even the ones at the two ends as well. Now, as I mentioned, this project has like self scoring. And I did this because I wanted to be really simple for you to put together. And since there's, we've got all these other cut lines going on, adding some dash lines did not hinder the design. Whereas in the case of the invitations, I felt that those cut dash lines didn't look classy and they really needed a score. But in this case, I think it's fine. And the first thing that you'll do is put the side tab into the slot on the other side. And I recommend you use a little glue inside to secure that tab in place. So just a little glue under that tab and press it down and hold it until it's done. Now to close up the bottom of your box, set it on your surface and close it, fold it up just like this. Now if you're gonna put anything in it, you're gonna to wanna to put some tape on the bottom so it doesn't pop open on you. Just like that, just kind of push down at the bottom. And this is the time to fill it with, you know, some candy or something, a bath bomb, whatever you're giving out. Here I've got some knife finished with candy in them. And then you want to tuck your tabs in and secure them with a ribbon. I found the best way to do this was to th thread the ribbon through three of the sides at the top of the box and then pull them in and then tie a bow across the fourth one so that the bow would lay flat and not be kind of pulled and tugged. It also makes it a lot easier to open and close so that people don't have to unthread it to get into it and risk tearing the box. Because when this box is done, it makes a beautiful luminary and it's really nice souvenir of your special day. And there we go. There is our favor box. And here's our whole entire set. Isn't that pretty? I think that these are just so lovely. And again, there's many different designs that you can buy on Etsy. And I have links below this video if you'd like to see my favorites. And you can also make these yourself. Totally you can make these yourself using Inkscape or Illustrator and my cut above SVG design course will show you how to do that. Now these invitations are all five inches by seven inches, also known as A7, which is the most common, common invitation size. So you want to be sure to get A7 envelopes to match these as well. And if you'd like to learn how to address your envelopes with your Cricut, check out my Cricut writing and pen tutorial video, which shows you exactly what to do. Now, the biggest issue you're likely to have with making these invitations is just getting those fine, intricate cuts. Remember to use sticky mats, keep your blade clean, and make sure your settings are correct for the best results. It's definitely doable. And if you like the idea of these invitations but want a different style or something more personalized, it's actually really easy to design these yourself. 
Really, it is. I teach my students how to design cards just like this in my Cut Above SVG design course, which you can learn more about at jennifermaker.com slash cut above. This course is an excellent way to learn how to make designs that you can share or even sell yourself. And I'm opening enrollment again very soon. So if this interests you, be sure to check it out so you don't miss the enrollment period. There's a link below this video for more information on it. So, are you ready to make these? Because I'm so excited to see you make them. If you have any questions at all about making these invitations, please leave a comment below this video or even better, post over on my Facebook group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And that's it for today. Remember, if you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until next time. <laughs>